Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the International Wildcard Invitational. I am Max Alice Anderson. This is Jake Spawn Tiberian. We're here for game three. Everything reset. Yeah, exactly right. 1 1. Turkey able to hit back. I nearly said Brazil. They didn't. Unfortunately, lost the last game after taking the yep. first. So, yeah, straight back to square one. 1 1 coming through here. We haven't really learned much apart from the fact that Besiktas still looked fantastic late game. And Brazil still look great during the mid game. Yeah, they most certainly do. And I want to talk about Dumbledore because this guy's Morgana, honestly, to me, felt like it was what won Besiktas that game. Yeah, I think that he had a good game coming through there. Once again, his item build was a little bit questionable for me. I didn't really know what the Luden's Echo did in the build. And I also think he needed a Void Staff if he was going to go that AP route because he was kind of ap -ish. But you needed like four spells to break his Black Shield. Yeah, it certainly did. So he had a lot of, I guess... Defense coming through there for the Black Shield, but then why build Luden's Echo? Because it's fun. Yeah, well, that's a very unique reason to build an <laughs> item in a very important game, Atlas. That is a very point. But I good definitely point. think that he had a, yeah, he had a reasonable game coming through there. For me, though, it was all about the top laner and the AD carry. Thaldrin and Nadius really did take over the end of that game. You could see that the team was revolving around them a little bit more. Theocles, to his credit, had a much better yeah. Game than what he did game one. But once again, really do expect him to step up further because Revolta still seems to be the jungler that is trying to make the proactive moves. Had a couple of missed opportunities in that game, Revolta. Wasn't willing to use his flash early, which I think he very no. much got punished for because they weren't able to take over the map the way they would have if they picked up another couple of kills. But in the end, it really was just about how well Besiktas are able to call late game. Yeah, they really did beautifully. And they made sure that they... Got off the Baron when they needed to and got everything working in their favor. And they got the team fights working exactly how they wanted them to, which, as you were mentioning throughout the entirety of the game, it's really, really difficult to make that work. Yeah, it certainly is. And, you know, I think that it was a little bit strange that INTZ wanted to fight that last fight so much. Hmm. They got the Baron in the end and Tokas flew into the back line solo. And as you mentioned, that Morgana Black Shield is absolutely huge because of how much AP was sitting on Dumbledore. And he wasn't able to burst Nadius down. The correct call that time would have just been to peel off the top. They hit a good Glacial Prison. There was no way that we're going to get engaged upon. Yeah. They could have just peeled away with the Baron buff, reset and started trying to siege down some turrets. Instead, it all went wrong and they ended up losing the game off an overly aggressive call. Remember, they were on four dragons and had a Baron buff. Yeah, they only had to wait another three minutes. It could have been the fifth I dragon to come through. it was like 37 through. seconds or something before the next dragon was oh, up. Right. It was like really close because they stored it out for such a long time. And yeah, you're exactly right. You get the Baron buff, you push out all the waves, all of a sudden you got the fifth dragon. The super late scaling, everyone's got six items. You've got an extra 12% on top of that. You can just crush through the turrets and end the game. Instead, they pulled the trigger on a split second decision and it was the wrong one. Yeah, well, you do have to make decisions like that, of course, in these games. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. At least to INTZ's credit, they all went in at the same time. So if you've got split calls But like they that, didn't go work. in at the same time. Tokas was about two screens ahead of anyone Everyone and died had the before same the idea, though. He just had more tools. He just ghost flashed right into the back there. Yeah, which is not the right call <laughs> once again. So I'm just trying to play defense, you know? Yeah, Devil's you are advocate. really trying to play defense, but it was just wrong. Yeah, unfortunate. A little bit unfortunate. Speaking of just wrong, I did get some feedback on Regifted Amumu, just to throw out there. Yep. And uh, I have 100% positive feedback that Regifted Amumu two of two. is incredibly um, adorable. Okay. And you're wrong. He's not. It's not the worst skin, and you wouldn't never play it. So you're crazy. If you play Regifted Amumu over Prom Queen... <laughs> Almost Prom King Amumu? Yeah. I would never do that. It's my favorite skin as well. But that's personal preference, okay? It's different. Yep, so two of two on the desk just re <laughs> reproved my point. Thank you very much. Oh, we might need some more help. A little bit unfortunate. Yeah. Remember, keep tweeting at us. <laughs> Hashtag IWCI. Yeah, you got it. You don't need to say it like you don't know what you're talking about. I think you're well aware that it's hashtag IWC. I I, I do know that is what it is. Oh my goodness. Still waiting to get into this game, ladies and gentlemen. But I'm incredibly excited to see how this one goes because, of course, now our Turkish lineup with all of, the, all of the momentum heading into what is now a best of three. Yeah, exactly right. And they can completely reset. Once again, I think that they've figured out that they can pick scaling. They've been yeah. able to do it quite consistently. I think Nunu pairing up with Nadius really is a combo that they need to seriously look at. That's why teams are banning Lulu away from them because they are so scary in the late game. And I think that on INTZ's side, 
they will once again look at their mid lane pick. Vladimir did a lot, got very far ahead. But without CC, you're not really able to punish people the way you would with something like an Ari or a LeBlanc. So he needs to find yeah. that happy medium, something that he can farm up a storm and get ahead, but also has some 1v1 solo potential that he can use to push the advantage. I, just, I wanted to do it so badly. Do not say more to <laughs> Oh, I just really did, but not going to happen. And it's probably not an option. What is, though? If, if they were looking at something like that, mid-game with CC, is Lissandra still an option there in the mid lane? Is Zareth a thing? No, I don't think Zareth's a thing. It's too hard to bust tanks at the moment. Cassiopeia yeah. is a very good champion for that. Kassadin, very good mm -hmm. champion. Scales well into the late game. So there's definitely tools available that are like mid-late game assassins that also add some peeling. You need to play them a little bit, I guess, more finesse-based. Orianna, big impact mage that you still have 1v1 potential if you catch someone out on. Yeah. Especially if you go loot and Zeko in your build somewhere along the way. So, yeah, there's definitely some mages available that they will be able to go to if they really do want to try and take over this mid-game section. I just didn't know what exactly they were hoping. Like, the layering of CC was there if they got the perfect engage. But when they saw the kite back comp that had come through Besiktas, I think they need to swap it up a little bit more. Yeah, well, we'll see what they do because there's a whole lot of different options here. I just expect that Morgana is most definitely from now on going to be INTZ's most highly prioritized ban. Yeah, definitely would be one up there. I think Lulu still takes the cake. I think Lulu does okay. everything that Morgana does, but does it better in a mid lane position where energy all of a sudden is completely safe and can't be killed in lane and can farm up a complete storm. So I think that Lulu, Morgana are the two ones there for me as well because they keep Nadius so safe. Yeah, well, and Nadius does seem to be a player that they can play around as well. It once again had... An absolutely awful early phase, but then got huge. And we do have a replay from last game, and we'll put it on your screen now. And this was the siege on the top side that didn't actually work out that well. Yeah, so this is a fairly even trade. As we uh, take a look at exactly where the teams are positioned, it looked like INTZ were caught way off guard. Besiktas had rotated into the... Uh, we're able to rotate into the top lane. And as we roll this one out, you'll see that Besiktas have to very quickly disengage and Revolta flies in there and gets three people stunned up. The problem, none of those people are Nadia. So as we roll this one out, you continue to see Nadia getting a couple of free hits on the back line. And it's not until they get on to there, right there, that they are able to really keep Nardius under control. So it was all about Yang this time around. The engage was good, but the re-engage from Yang, jumping over the top, throwing Nardius through and getting everything on there. You saw Jockster also burnt the ultimate, is what secured uh, INTZ having any hope in this fight. As we continue to roll it out, you see Macau joins the fight from the side, able to get a lot of damage through. Theocles actually got a full channeled ultimate on the backside which did a lot of work, and we ended out fairly even. I believe it's a two-for-two two trade. But that's what INTZ didn't do enough. Continue to engage, run forward, and get through a lot of the CC. Instead, they were going with one and two members and weren't able to get the flank positioning, which is why I thought peeling off the top of the Baron would have opened it up, because all of a sudden, if ever Besiktas stepped towards you, you have much better tools to deal with them. Yeah, that's exactly right. And Thaldrin as well needs another mention in that fight. His equalizer between the turret and the wall there really just destroyed both Revolta and I believe it was uh, Jockster as well sitting on that situation. And we do have another replay, ladies and gentlemen. We'll put that one up on your screen and see how this one worked out. This is a little bit earlier. Yeah, so this is a third dragon fight coming through here. And you see straight away the teleport coming through from uh Thaldrin in the top lane, everyone else already there. So as we roll this one out, this is a perfect example of what I meant. They couldn't engage, but as they peel back, they're unstoppable. So the equalizer comes through, the full channel comes across. And once again, Tokas flies in by himself, but has to retreat. And all of a sudden, Nadius is on the back, just uh, free hitting everyone. He's able to continue that one off. Thaldrin, he goes in a little bit too deep, ends up dying, and they overcommit once again for Tokas. Dumbledore falls here as well, but they're able to pick up the one team fight. They rotate it uh, into the dragon as well in the end, and that was just a really good example of as soon as the equalizer went down, it just makes all the straight line skill shots so much easier to hit. You saw the binds, the charms, everything flying out there. Throw the harpoons as well because they do ridiculous yeah. amounts of slow, not to mention damage in the late game. So, Nunu... He's so hard to run through. You throw any kind of CC on top of that, and it just becomes like a minefield where you're trying to dodge things, but pretty much in your waist in snow.
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Absolute zero is pretty ridiculous. And that team fight was a perfect example of the fact that they didn't really have that much to do to Theocles to stop him from being able to just uh, use all of that ultimate in the middle of a fight. Because if they're wasting their CC on the Nunu, then you can't get to the Jinx. Yeah, exactly right. And that's exactly what I was going to say. So they have very important CC. So they had a lot of CC in their kit. But unless it was like the first auto attack coming through from Nautilus, they weren't really willing to expend anything else on it. He was never going to get Nautilus altered or hooked or something like that to break it. In the end, that you saw they tried to dive through instead. Once again, that was another team fight where Tokka's completely overcommitted to yeah. try and get on the back line. And realistically, on Vlad, wasn't going to solo out Nadius. No, he wasn't. And Tokka's... Did farm up an absolute storm. He had one of the highest CS margins in the this whole tournament thus far. Of course, was ahead of the clock by about 20 CS. Really beautiful stuff at 20 minutes into the game. Yeah, it but was like 80 CS up yeah, on his lane opponent. Absolutely stupid. But when you can't use all of that money in the end of the game and it gets to a point where everyone has six items anyway, that's irrelevant. Yeah, exactly right. And that's exactly what happened. They just stalled the game out. And I'm really expecting INTZ to commit more heavily on their mid game. Try and get these leads that they have closed out a little bit further so they can roll over the top at about the 30 minute mark because right now going to 50 minutes against Besiktas looks like suicide. Yeah, it looks like an absolutely stupid idea, but INTZ, they've listened to me and you and it's going to be exactly the same blue side bands to come through this time around and actually Besiktas, they're going to lose a band. They actually spoke during one of their pauses in the last game, so they only have two and is the Hecarim going to be first pickable here by Yang? That's the question. Or will he go back to something like the Shivana oh, in the top lane? Because no, that no, will no, no, also no, no, be no, available. No, 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 no. Gragas? LeBlanc. LeBlanc can possibly be the ban? I think LeBlanc has to be picked up first up if it doesn't get banned away. But it is going to be banned, and that means Hecarim is going to get through. Yeah, so Hecarim is a potential first pick here. We've seen already Toldrin very happy on the Maokai, and I think the Maokai does relatively well in the lane. Also, it gets extremely tanky last game, but it won't be. It will be the Ari picked up first. And this means Hecarim can go over to Thaldron. Yeah, they've got Hecarim and potentially a Nunu and a Gragas. Gragas. They could go Hecarim, Gragas. And that would be a ridiculous disruption comp. Yeah, it certainly would be. So obviously, INTZ prioritizing getting Tokas onto an extremely comfortable mid-game mage over going for one of those top lane carries and try and setting Yang up as we see Thaldron taking a very serious look at that top lane Hecarim. They go, Hecarim Sejuani. Yeah, Theocle is going to take away the Sejuani here, and Revolta was very, very good on that champion. Now, again, considering the Lee Sin. But we'll see what he does go with, because that is a whole lot of terrifying late game once again to be picked up by Bashikta. But you have to get there, Atlas. If they go something like Lee Sin, commit on the Rumble, they actually don't. They go towards a Siva Thresh. So once again, taking the Thresh away from Dumbledore, trying to get him onto something he's not comfortable with. Yeah, they've banned away the Morgana here as well, so no Thresh to be had for Dumbledore. We'll see what he does pick up. Nadia's thinking about what he wants to go with, just cycling through about all of the AD carries. And we'll see what Energy decides to do as well now that his Ari's been taken away. Of course, hasn't been quite as comfortable on anything other than the Ari. Mm, we'll have to see exactly how that one works out. Had a Pretty decent last game on Ari. Still wasn't able to keep up in farm. And wow, that's a powerful engage tool coming through if they go something like a Leona here in the bottom lane. Oh, I really want that Varus to come through. Why? Because Varus and Leona is amazing. Yep. And Ari will just kill him every fight. Unless he kills her first. Chains of corruption, man. Spirit rushes at you, just chains her up. If he gets... A if Ari gets a Luden's Echo, mm. you're not going anywhere. Because you're dead. Ah, right. Okay, I was wondering how that Luden's Echo is CC. But Nuttiest is in the end going to lock away the Lucian. Probably a more intelligent choice, I'll admit. But Macau, now thinking about Gragas for Revolta, that'd make a lot of sense. A little bit more early power than the Sejuani, but still is going to be that massive tanky beast in the later stages of the game. Shades of Julio Stito coming through there. His Gragas was absolutely amazing, but Gragas just in general across regions has been fantastic in the jungle. And Yang, thinking about just heading straight back to the Shivana, just trying to beat Thaldrin at his own game. Yeah, exactly right. Looks for another 
probably peaks a little bit earlier, Shivana, to be honest, and doesn't have to commit to a uh, damage item at all throughout the game. Can go the player than King if you want, but gets extremely tanky. So we'll be able to deal with uh, Lucian a lot easier. So we'll have to see exactly how that one works out. Only a mid lane to come through. Both sides actually lacking in the damage department over long extended fights. Ezreal doesn't really make much sense in that regard because you're not really going to get through a Shivana with Ezreal. So hovering a Diana now, better assassin potential to get onto the back line. But once again, the consistent damage is going to be a problem here for Besiktas. Yeah, and Yang's probably not going to have too much trouble going up against a Diana in a split push situation as well. But Soldron might get to a stage, especially in the late, late game on this Hecarim where he will just be able to run wherever he feels like. And Dumbledore has been considering this Diana for quite some time. Yeah, so Diana probably going to be the pickup coming through. It, it is. Wow. So a very tanky lineup once again. Diana, a very tanky mid laner. Turns into kind of an assassin once she grabs some items. But with that shield, it is very, I guess, safe in a split push situation. Yeah. I actually think that she can go against Yang fairly well in the early game because she will have the Ignite to be able to get down some rotations of spells as well as the Ignite coming through. Um, but we'll have to see exactly how that one works out. And on the side of INTZ, I'm very concerned about late game damage. I just don't know whether they have it to cut through Theocles, Dumbledore, and Thaldron. Not to mention Energy, who's going to be getting double procs of that shield. Go something... If he goes anything like a Abyssal into a Zonya's Hourglass, is going to be incredibly tanky. Yeah, it's going to be super hard to kill him. Not to mention the fact that it's going to be super hard to kill everyone other than Nadius. Yeah, and once on again, we've already shown that Nadius really hard dude to catch in the back of team fights. Yeah, and he's very good at holding onto his flash as well. We've seen him only using that when he's definitely going to die half the time or after kill someone. a dredge line. Yeah, or if he needs to kill someone. Yeah, That's true we've seen well. him use it if he needs to kill someone as well. So we'll see exactly how this one works out here. And they've got better engage here on the side of uh, Besiktas definitely yeah, this time around. They have the Sejuani. They have the Leona to be able to layer up some of that CC. But we'll have to see whether they're able to pick the fights because once again, they look very good when people are engaging on them. They're kiting away. They're kind of using terrain very well to their advantage. That's yep. something that Nadius does terrifically. But on the side of INTZ, they definitely have more of a mid-game composition coming into this one. Yeah, INTZ really want to get some advantages early. They've shown that they're good at it. They are most definitely good at it moving into these games. And they have been able to get these dives happening very early on. And we'll see whether that is going to be how they get themselves ahead. Because right now, they need to make it happen in the early stages of the game. And they've got it all resting on their shoulders now. Brazilian pride is on the line as we're getting into the rift, ladies and gentlemen. INTZ and Besiktas both all tied up. And it is now a best of three scenario in this best of five. INTZ now grouped up as five, but Besiktas looked to be waiting for them. Yeah, so Besiktas finally counting on the engage coming through here. Very hard to face check into Leona. So it looks like they're going to do it. They've been spotted out. They back away. Yeah, they didn't decide that they had enough engage there. They actually watched the Oculus head into that brush. But it is going to be the Mexican standoff. No one with any vision in either brush, but the barrel is going to be there. 90s that actually fancy themselves the ones with the level one advantage. Yeah, so they're looking to get in there. They both spot out wards. Everyone is going to spot everyone. They're going to actually take shared. Q over the E there. So maybe hoping that they didn't fully commit to a five-man invade. They're hoping to catch four strag stragglers. But in the end, Deep Vision goes down on the side, once again, of INTZ. Yeah, and they managed to take another ward down. So two wards to one. Definitely getting the better of that invade. INTZ with the early game comp, early game advantage. Yeah, exactly right. Coming through massive there. Although I think one of the wards that was killed might have been an action. No, it wasn't. They're all trinket wards. So yeah. all wards made equal at this point, part of the game. <laughs> well, that's true. Tokers didn't actually use his. So uh, just wants to hold on to it, make sure that he has that available for the early stages of this laning phase. Yang and Revolta just backs to one another, taking down some camps here in the jungle. Thaldrin going to do the same with Theocles around as well. And another Q 
Oh dear, let's not go through this again. Are we gonna? T okay, you get to you get to do it once. It's the first time we've seen Diana today. No, that's fine. I won't talk about. it. I just think that W gives you lots more defensive options level one than what Q does. Also helps you push a little bit better. Yep. So we're not going to talk about it though. No. Energy is able to at least get to level two, but you're exactly right. Does get punished there just a little bit. He also has a flask, so realistically he could face tank whatever he wanted at this part of the game, and he's probably not going to die. True. Tokas, though, is able to clear out this minion wave, and the lane swap has come through. Nadius in the top side. Yeah, but he it has shoved out incredibly quickly and recalled straight away, so they want the 2v2 lane. And you see Thaldrin, he was hoping he gets some farm down there. He did wander down there. It was all of a sudden, his AD carry calls him back, and he's like, all right, I'll recall as well. But it does mean that Macau gets a little bit more time in this lane. Nadius was unable to pick up what is the next wave heading through, which Mikhail just grabbed. Yeah, the but he started to shove turret. that as well. So he actually won't lose much at all. There's only 5 CS advantage. You would think that there's more creep wave there. There That's certainly right. is. So he's actually up because he initiated the reswap. And it looks like... They're they dodging the Lucian lane. Yeah. So not wanting to go against Nadius here at all. So much respect for the Besiktas bottom lane. And Macau and Joxter head back top. Yeah, so they're completely dodging it. We'll have to see whether they chase them for a third time. As Soldrin, that's actually a huge creep wave up there pushing into him. He probably wants some assistance because otherwise he's in a position to be dove pretty heavily by Revolta. Yeah, Revolta does get the Rift Scuttler, but he's going to be heading up top again. Very dark on this map for Besiktas as Joxter and Macau heading up here as well. It's three men strong. Yang still hanging that out. That is a huge creep ground. wave, and no one is there to help the top laner of Besiktas. He's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he's going to get body slammed here as well. Does move out of the way of it, but takes half of his health. And he's going to lose two, nearly three creep waves on that turret as the teleport comes into the bottom lane. So yeah. they're going to be able to pick up a lot more CS on their side. Uh, INTZ and a good trade back actually helps them out very extensively. Thaldrin teleported in. Yeah, Thaldrin actually getting back into the lane. Uh, okay, Theocles was up there. I was like, wow, that is real brave. Nah, Bristle's there. You're fine. He's going to permafrost this wave as well as Energy able to use that Pale Cascade to get this wave out of his face. Talk is continuing to shove and fairly relentlessly. now because Thaldrin willing to burn that teleport to get back up there actually means that they very heavily win this Besiktas. Nadius, 11 CS up. That is nothing to scoff at as the dive now. Yeah, Energy actually going to use the Moonfall, but only to watch himself die as first blood goes to Tok as the Ignite picks it up. And that was just beautifully played. That charm. On energy, just started the whole thing. Yeah, exactly right. Able to get through there. They layered the CC well. The dive came through. Energy was the one that tanked... Uh, sorry, Tokas was the one that tanked up the early turret damage, so he was never really in danger of killing his jungler off that. And just a very good commit to a dive. Yeah, and this mini wave going to be shoved out yet again. Cow and Jock stay able to farm this one out. And there's just a lot of backs going on. Yeah, there certainly is. Line. So they back again. Nadius was standing on top of a ward, but they are sending their top laner once again into the bottom lane. They're searching for the 1v1 lane extremely hard, and maybe this time they'll get it. Yeah, it's the game of musical lanes going on this game. And who's the beneficiary of this situation, though? Like, what, I think who does they this want, work out for? I, I, for some reason, I think they think the Leona lane will be able to win out against the Thresh. Maybe counting on Dumbledore to be able to get a good engage, but you think with the Spell Shield, not to mention the Flay, that's going to be extremely difficult to level 6, but they seem to be doggedly hunting the 2v2 lane. They must think they have an advantage in that situation. Yeah, there must be something available for them, because of course Thresh has been picked often as a counter matchup to Leona. Yeah, there's very differing opinions about that. At level 6, it's definitely in Leona's favour. Okay. Well, you just throw the Solar Flare at him. Yeah, so you get flayed out of your Zenith Blade and then say, all right, I'll press R. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. Boomerang going to come over the top. Macau not going to find Nadius or Dumbledore, but they do shove the wave out. And needlessly large rod to be completed by Tokas. He spent a lot of time in that lane and picked up first blood and first ward, I believe. So he's going to be able to pick that one up. A lot of extra damage here. And the response is an extra Doran's ring, so... Man, energy. 
Not exactly in a position of power in this lane anymore. Yeah, definitely not. So it's the two Dorans ring that was a pickup for energy. So it was an 800 gold shop to a 1600 gold shop. So much more power, as you said, coming through. As the hook does miss there from Jockster. And Macau getting a love tap over onto Dumbledore there at the same time. Theocles does head over this wall. Body slam going to be there for Revolta. Barrel comes down. Theocles losing out on this trade most definitely as energy can't find the Crescent Slash. Yeah, so the rotation came through. They're looking for the blue buff already coming down. They've got the early invade, and they're going to be able to pick this one up, you would think. Yeah, Tokas is over the side here. The collapse actually coming through onto Thaldron. Now he has to be careful. Yeah, Thaldron oh, gets caught good out. Shoot. Oh, Tokas going to get exploded. Beautifully played there. And Besiktas just said, let's kill Ari. Yeah, so the Duke came out of Thaldron to dodge out of the charm. And in the end, all the damage just came through and overcommit means that the kills will be equaled up. I think that the use of the Hecarim ultimate may be a little bit of an overreach, but in the end, doesn't really matter because they pick up the kill. Definitely looked fancy, though. I'll give him points for that one. As, style points? Yep, style points ultimate. You may not need to use it in the yes. next little while, but it is his flash. Dressage out of 10. Right oh, there. yeah, definitely dressage. I liked his braided mane. That was my favorite part. Look out. Able to auto attack these waves down and double doge waiting patiently in the brush. Now going to show himself. Hasn't hit level six just yet. It's the land going to be used to pick up some souls there. And they're going back in the top lane yet again. So Joxter and Macau both recalling Dragon. Now a very high priority at only nine minutes in. They use the ultimate out of Nadius to try and shove this lane in as hard as possible, and they'll match the recalls. Oh, actually just try and get some turret damage. Yeah, Macau actually stopping his back here as they're going for a dive. Shield of Daybreak not actually going to get spell shielded as he flashes over the top. Yang, he makes his way in though. Dragon's Descent is available, but Macau so incredibly low on the hunt. Has been popped. Might get him to safety. Boomerang comes through. Nadius taking so much damage. Macau picks up the kill. Dumbledore uses the Eclipse. The Zenith Blade picks himself the up the kill, but look at all of the players coming through from... INTZ, they pick themselves up a kill, but look at that, Thaldron finds his way in. Tokas once again dies to the horse. And I don't even know how many people died in that exchange. What was it, two, two for two? Two in the end coming through, but probably a win for Besiktas again. They are able to probably go for this dive even off the backside. Yeah, Energy looking for the Lunar Rush, but Revolta underneath the turret. They don't really want to dive too deep. They get the blue invade off the back of it as well. So Theocles is going to be able to donate this one over to Energy. Revolta looking for it. Oh, Energy did manage to pick it up in the end. Theocles very low on mana. Gets knocked up. There's the double play. Moonfall, though, to come in. And Joxter takes a lot of damage. Yang finds his way in with a dark passage. And he's going to kill Theocles. But in the back line, Thaldren doing so much work. Energy. Picks himself up a kill, but Revolta is doing revolting damage in this fight. Yang picks up the kill onto Thaldron. My producer is getting very angry with that horrific pun. And that was a beautiful fight for INTZ. Yeah, three for one in the end coming through, and they're able to take it all. It's because the support player stuck around. And even though he went down in the end, there was just too much CC available. And now they're sending Ari. Tokas coming down into the bottom lane for a gank will be spotted the award, but can he get anything here? Yeah. Can they move out in time is the question here as Besiktas do disengage. Tokas is going to sweep out the ward there and doesn't actually decide to go aggressive. Another culling going to be used to clear out this minion wave as Macau, he says, I don't even need to use an ultimate for that amount of wave clear and I'll just do the same. Yeah, so in the end, map equalizing finally, but as the dust settles... Yang is a 3-0-2 Shivana in the top lane with a red buff My and is goodness. probably untouchable now for the rest of the game. Yeah, Tokas though once again going to get caught out. There's the Lunar Rushes. Tokas is burning down. Nice Orbit Deception to stop Energy from being able to get any further. And INTZ, they're going to take down the first Dragon. Yeah, Dragon Unless started Unless Theocles can get there. He does blow the ultimate. It is going to be Revolta picking up the Dragon as we're drifting lazily through the mid lane. And Joxter is hanging around, but... Just going to be the Dragon. Yeah, so Dragon picked up there. They choose not to sweep out that ward. Yang has headed down. He is an absolute monster at this part of the game. 88 CS in what was a very strange level one. Yeah. And he's also picked up three kills and two assists. 
This, uh, this is a very, very big dragon. This dragon is a big deal, ladies and gentlemen. Yang is going to meet Thaldrin here on the top side. As the red buff, he has to be careful. Twin Bite going to take down the cannon creep. And ah, should have realized this is a Shivana. Going to be prioritizing farm every single time. Yeah, exactly right. As we have Revolta sweeping out some wards. Trying to pick up a Rift Scuttler is Theocles, but mid lane now looks to be the priority here. Yeah, energy clearing out these minions underneath the turret. Pale Cascade getting them to a nice spot. And that's a nice cue in order to clear out the rest of them. So he does have the CS advantage. Thaldrin now getting his wave shoved in over and over again as Yang doesn't want to spend any time in the lane, just wants to be able to clear out the jungle. I believe he just took the Krugs and down to the Gromp and will then get back in time for the next wave. Yeah, exactly right. And this is all you do in Shivana. Continue to shove out, make sure that there's pressure elsewhere on the map from your jungler and then just continue to farm up as many creeps as you can. And you can see already it's starting to become a problem for the uh, Hecarim. Yeah, Skirmisher Saber being used by both of these top laners. And Yang, you can see, he's just got way too much consistent damage, even for a Hecarim. His energy is going to get spotted out on his way here. Hecarim, I mean, Revolta, sorry, not worried at all about this. Diana is Tokas. There's the Spirit Rush. Yang might be in trouble. He just dragonly descends over the wall. There's the wa uh, the charm, sorry, but it's not going to find anything there. Soldier, and he's fairly low, but he's a tanky Hecarim with a Cinder Hulk, so he's going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, so everyone just moves away here. Tokas is a healthy member as well as Revolta. They've forced him off the turret. Theocles, he's doing Krugs, and they're going to pick up the first turret of the game. Yeah, Krugs are pretty important, though, Spawn. Take down the outer turret. Thaldron is backing, but he's on a ward as Revolta is going to spot him out. And this is the Revolta we've been looking for this series, the Revolta that's not scared of fighting anyone on the map ever. Yeah, exactly right. So he was willing to get in there. This time he used his flash aggressively was able to get enough pressure out there to pick up the first turret, and that's an early gold lead coming across to INTZ. Yeah, and this is what they need. Their comp, not exactly the, the scaling one in this particular matchup. So really wanting to make the start early, and they're doing so. Yeah, certainly are, and they've got the advantage on Yang. That split-pushing Shivana going to be incredibly difficult to deal with. As we see, Aludin's Echo already finished up here in the mid lane for Tokas versus Home Guard Boots Sorks and a Blasting Rod. So going to be able to get around the map incredibly quickly here, Energy. It doesn't really have home, uh, Teleport or anything like that. So the Home Guard Enchant is pretty interesting. Yeah, that is an odd one. Doesn't have any speed ups either. So it's not like Hecarim where you just buy the Home Guards and you can instantly get back for every wave. It's not the same situation, but we'll see what he was thinking as we move further through and this Yang game. And Yang is two levels ahead of Thaldrin at this point. That is an absolutely massive Shivana. She's just going to be able to continue to split push the top lane. It forces a lot of CS onto the Hecarim. However, he just can't win any 1v1 trade right now. No, most definitely not. That's almost the Warmog's completed. Nice death sentence to net Macau himself a cannon minion. As Yang just continuing to push this one out. Thaldrin just says, okay, okay, I'll just wait for the minion But they're wave. bringing three members up there once again, looking to dive the Hecarim. And Thaldrin needs to get off his tier 2 turret now. Yeah, he's going to get smote yet again. Is He's going to devastatingly charge That's out of here. That's a tier here. 2 turret. There is no way they can afford to give this up at 15 minutes into the game. Yeah, there's a teleport into the bottom lane, though. As Chocolis was looking for something. But that's actually going to be the ultimate here for Thaldrin. He gets knocked back as well. He's not as tanky as he wants to be. He gets slowed down by the barrel. There's the Crescent Strike. That explosive cask was beautiful by Revolta. And that locks them down the kill and maybe even the turret. They trade for the outer in the bottom lane. INTZ do disengage from that one. And it looks like the inner turret not actually going to fall. Of course, still has quite a few resistances at this stage. And energy's waiting around trying to hold on. Yeah, they're trying to get there to be able to stop this one going down. It looks like in the end they will back away. But a kill for a turret probably... Still in favor for INTZ, just because they're the one causing map pressure everywhere, as Theocle is now trying to chase Revolter off. Yeah, but if this is him. news of things to come, 3-0 and 3 now for Shivana has picked up a Warmog's armor as well. He's just so accelerated in this game. Once again, the Lucian going to struggle very much to kill him. Yeah, we, We've seen this story. We game have. one. We have. Didn't go too well for Besiktas. Actually, Energy going to use the ultimate there just for some harass damage onto Tokas. Wasn't expecting it. Got a really low cooldown there.
Yeah, it's only about 15 seconds. Absolutely fine, Lunar Rush. It's a fun ability. Quite like Lunar Rush. As far as ultimates go. Really? Yeah. What's Lunar Rush got that other things don't? Well, it's like a Shadow Dash that resets. Wait, hang Who's on. That's shadow what Shadow Dash? Dash does. Isn't Shadow Dash, that's Akali's ultimate? I have no idea. You're the namey one. No, I'm not the namey one. Are you? No, it's basically the same ability as Akali's ultimate. So I like both of them. You like both of them. Yeah. Isn't that just like Katarina Z? Yeah, Shampo. Yeah, kind of. No, but it accepts that Shampo is more of a flash. It's not actually a movement. So, for instance, you can Shampo over Azir's wall. And you can't Shadow Dash or Lunar Rush over an Azir wall. I didn't know that. Yeah. See, fun facts with Atlas. But, in other news, Dragon's going down. Besiktas, they're going to answer the Dragon that INTZ managed to pick up before. Yeah, but once again, just all the pressure on the top side of the... Uh, map is going to go across and they might be able to pick up once again another turret as Soldier and he has to stop his back here. They need to bring more members up. This turret going to take a lot of damage. Yeah, and it had already been started before. INTZ, they're going to move their whole roster up there. Even Macau coming through as Thaldrin. He's made his way over. Theocles does land the Otis. Revolt is going to have to flash away. There's the fear. Thaldrin manages to do it, but the outer turret falls in the mid lane. Dumbledore's looking for Yang. Don't know why. Spell Shield going to come through, but Macau not going to find any spells heading his way. Theocles making his way into the mid lane. Wow. There's the move for Macau. Takes so much damage. Dark Passage gets him to relative safety. As there's the boomerang. Piercing Light doesn't find it. Tokas picks up Nardius and how is Macau still alive? Yeah, Macau took nearly his whole health in one combo as energy takes out Tokas off the backside as well. As we have a look at a very glorious Hecarim farming in the top lane. But oh, majestic horse, probably worth two it. for one in the end. Besiktas hit back and they're not done yet. Oh my goodness, Yang getting chased by Theocles. Not sure why it's that way around because Yang is super huge. Oh, he's after the Rift Scuttler, of course. Doesn't care about a Sejuani and Rest of the members are going to head back. Macau and Jockster are safe in the end. Yeah, so a 3 2 and 1 scoreline now for Energy. He's becoming a very potent assassin. Across the other side of the rift, 3 3 1 is the score for Tokas. So they're both at the moment probably two of the stronger members on their team. Can't look for, past Shivana as per the map goes because yeah. once again, Yang is probably in a class of his own, level 13 to level 11, the other highest maps. Two level lead, 161 CS, a 3 0 and 3. Just don't go near the Shivana. No, Doldrin is going to listen to you. He's going to head out of this lane as Yang is going to just power Probably farm Probably needs it. to pick up his own red buff before Shivana goes and takes it. Yep, thankfully he has Smite in order to lock that one down. The Ocali's on the other side of the map. He's going to be recalling, but definitely doesn't need red buff. There's the Sejuani. Pretty sure you're pretty good at slowing people down. Don't even need the extra damage. It's a bit silly. Jockster able to use that Relic Shield to net himself and his mid laner a bit of farm. And Nardius and Energy going to clear out this mid wave. So not too much going on at this stage of the game. No dragons available for the next few minutes. And Baron is up, but probably not going to be attempted. Yeah, Baron not a serious priority for at least another five minutes. But blue buff has been stolen away here. You feel his soldier and he's going to have his back reset again. I believe that might have just been the burnout as Yang. Probably wanted to take down the minions, let's be honest. INTZ now hanging around the dragon. Not sure why, because not up for the next little while. Oh, the blue buff was stolen by Tokas. Yeah, so Tokas able to walk away there with a the blue buff. They get that off Diana. Very important to be able to deal with Diana's cooldowns. Of course, not going any early CDR is going to hurt her now. And they pick up a bottom lane turret as well after a very good rotation. Probably just going to have to burn the ult here from Gragas, but should be able to clear out the wave. Yeah. No, they don't choose to. Might be some kind of base race scenario going on here as the inner turret is now under fire in the bottom side. Hecarim is hanging around. Did have the Collapse home guard Collapse coming through. They need to be careful here, INTZ. They might be able to get it, but the rest of the team is on their tail. Yeah, they are. Running quickly, they do have on the hunt available, but Yang launches himself into the back line. Revolta looking for energy, gets a barrel on him as Theocles does try to take down Jockster Macau. 
He can take the lantern, but does he want to? Definitely not, as Nadi is trying to deal with this dragon. Crescent Slash not going to find it as Macau is able to pick up Dumbledore. The double kill for the horse, though, as Tokas somehow fell over in the backside. We'll have to see exactly the how that help happened. The help you, AD carry. Yeah, Macau comes through. Nice spell shield as the ult is completely whiffed, but Nadius is massive on this Lucian. So fantastic at that champion. Theocles finally going to fall down, and these top laners, they're getting kills. Yeah, so in the end, a three for three trade comes across. No one getting the better of that one, but you think Yang continuing to pick up all of these gold, and once again, you mentioned Theocles not able to nail the ultimate coming through there. Probably cost Nadius his life in the long run. And yeah, that was a, a very strange team fight coming through. Blade of the Ruin King now finished Out up for right. this Shivana. That was that was all of the gold. That was twenty eight hundred gold. Yep. So that's a very very rich Yang, right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. That dragon sitting on a large mountain of gold. I believe. Yeah. I've heard of a dragon like that before. That one was pretty scary. I don't know whether this one's going to be ravaging entire towns though. Anyway, Jocks are going to be able to clear out these minions in the mid lane. Huge creep wave in the top side. As if I was Yang, I would have dragon descended over the top, but didn't need to. I would have just Completely got very, Completely unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, but you got to celebrate. Celebrate huge waves of minions. Yang is most definitely happy about it. He's going to be able to use the Burnout and the Cinder Hole. Can get this split push back on yet again. The inner turret in the top lane still very, very low. Yeah, and this is just a pure tank Thaldron coming out. He hasn't gone anywhere near his Trinity Force as of yet, which means that probably not going to be as, uh, as effective going into the next team fight as what the Shivana will be. Yeah, well, precisely. Shivana picking up an extra cloth armor as well. I wouldn't be surprised if that was yet another early thorn mail because that worked out fantastically for him in the last game dragon is up as well thaldron he needs to recall the one advantage he has is the fact that he turns movement speed into a heck of a lot of damage and we'll see if he can get in there yeah Th theocles takes half of his health though that's the jungler he wants to be there in the front line nice ult to come down breaks the culling dumbledore's looking to get something as the dragon is taken down macau playing this fight beautifully so far dodges out of the way of dumbledore's and he's going to fall down energy gets hooked up and thaldron just ults his way out of the fight knows that he ain't doing anything in energy luna rushes over tries to take down tokers but the tip of the boomerang going to pick that one up. Yeah, so in the end, they go two for nothing and pick up the ba uh, dragon. It was all because Dumbledore got caught out, wasn't able to use that ultimate to initiate. The layering of CC, wow, just hasn't been there. And now that will be four for none coming through. Yeah, that and is. And the Baron at this point in the game. All of a sudden, INTZ are on an absolute tear. That was a beautiful pick by Tokers, though. The charm over the wall, Nadius gets caught out and they just it's the double picks to come through as well i mean thaldron just gets caught at the same time yeah exactly right so baron will be picked up here theocles oh. needs to make the hero play he cannot dumbledore went for the solar flare but didn't find it yep and now an absolute mammoth advantage seven thousand gold in favor of this team and you have to think that Baron up creeps just suits him even further because you couldn't stop Shivana. Now Sh Shivana with these huge cannon creeps. Yeah, Shivana's got some so big hard. friends. Some definitely big friends. Actually now matching them very, very effectively. Yeah, it certainly is. Cute. Being on the blue side. But it's neither here nor there. Yang going to pick up both the cloth armor and the chain vest. Lots of clothing. But he's going to be going towards that thorn mail very soon. Macau able to clear out that red buff. And he Theocles the just not having well. the game that we need, uh, the Besiktas lineup, lineup needs out of their jungler. Yeah. Zero, two, and six has not been able to go this game with Revolta on an earlier jungle like Gragas. And I just don't understand why, if Nunu is available, they're not picking him because Nunu, very safe jungler, very hard to invade onto a Nunu. But every single time they pick a jungler that is slightly weaker in the early game, they're made to pay. Yeah, and Theocles showed that he's fantastic on Nunu as well. Why not pick up the Comfort Champion as INTZ just easily take that and that in a turret. That was started up for them beforehand. Thaldron, we've been in this scenario before. 
You definitely do not want to be there. And they have to give up this turret. There is no way right now that Besiktas can fight for an outer. So that one will fall down. Nearly make it a 9,000 gold advantage. And Yang just doesn't give a damn about anyone on the Rift right now. No. 19Z, they're going to be protecting their Siege minion as now they're looking to siege up this mid lane inhibitor turret. The melee minion's very tanky and it's just so much damage to be available onto the turrets if they can get up to it. But they have to be able to make it there and can Besiktas hold off? That's the question. Yeah, they certainly are trying. They have the culling to come through. They have a couple of smites to take down the cannon creeps. That's very relevant to talk about as Nadia still does pretty relevant damage to Yang. The Thorn Mail not coming through just yet. And we'll have to see whether they can repel this as Boomerang Whoa. does miss, but this might be the wave that they have to go on. Yeah, the Crescent Slash does land on a Macau as he has to really respect the Lunar Rush. That did a lot of damage. Doesn't land that one as this but look at the damage once again down. going down onto this turret. Theocles takes so much damage. There's a spell shield burnt for absolutely nothing. And maybe now they look for an engage with Thaldrim because it doesn't look like they are going to be the, able to keep the turret alive. Well, the inner turret in the bottom lane in the meantime is going to fall down here. So Besiktas with some nice bottom lane control means that INTZ have to commit. Solar Flare whips completely. Jockster, he might go down, but flashes out of the way. Macau in a monster, but energy just going to get destroyed by the Sivir and the giant dragon launches himself into the back line and takes out the Lucian. Macau flashes forward. There's the boomerang. Beautifully played. This might even be the game as INTZ. They take down the inhibitor. Only a couple of Nexus turrets and there's some big death timers. Yeah, there certainly is. It's about 20 seconds left on the mid laner. As they continue to go in, they're taking down... Whoa! Oh, Macau just gets altered and that's a whole lot of the t turret damage to go down. Tokas looking for a charm but they know that they do not have the consistent damage to finish this one off. They do get themselves, however, a 10,000 gold lead. Yeah, they certainly do. They'll be able to rotate down, pick up the rest of the jungle, get a recall as well. They must be sitting on so much gold right now, the INTZ lineup. And it was all about uh, Yang that team fight. You didn't see it because he was off screen, but he completely zoned away Thaldrin and killed Nardius before the fight had even really got underway. And what that meant is that big wombo that had been set yeah. up, you're waiting for the Hecarim to fly across it, just never came. Yeah, and has teleport available right now as well as Revolta. B the Besiktas lineup looking to try and catch some people out. He was sitting in base, did have the home guard enchant. He picked up a Spectre's Cowl and finished his uh, Thorn Mail, so... Yeah, we're going to see another six-item Shivana. Yeah, exactly right. And we're going to see it probably before the 35-minute mark as well. He can just head into the top lane, clear out that huge creep wave. And right now, no one can run with him at all. He's just an absolute beast. And we'll have to see exactly what will happen as this game gets towards the later stages. Yeah, he's just clearing out this top wave as well. He's going to be able to get himself towards some bigger items. But Yang... Just going to take down the minions. It's going to be absolutely fine. Thaldrin and Theocles hanging out together. Take down the Krugs. And look, Besiktas well and truly behind at this stage. Yeah, they certainly are. And they need to pray for a miracle engage to come through. <laughs> There's not really much they can do, though. Because even if they are engaged to bot, the enemy team is just so much stronger. That's exactly right. Besiktas are going to clear out that pink ward there as well. The dragon is going to fall INTZ. They pick up that one. That's their third. So well on track for a 42-minute fifth dragon. Yeah, they certainly are. And everyone, if you're wondering why Atlas is having a giggle, he's just done a high and completely destroyed a desk. I did not destroy a desk. I just accidentally <laughs> spilled it a little <laughs> bit. Okay. It's neither here nor there, Spawn. There's no need to advertise to everyone. Hey, I was just doing what you do to me and inform the viewers <laughs> of exactly what is going on off camera as Yang continues his split push in the top lane. Red buff is going to be taken in the meantime and I don't, by Thaldrin. Yeah, this game, it, they can continue to stall out as well. That barrel even does serious damage to Nardius, but there's just no real solution they have unless they are able to nail them with all the CC underneath the turret that Yang is not tanking. If Yang is tanking the turret and they nail them with the CC, I still think they win the fight. Well, it's almost as if they're fighting without the turret because Yang just soaks up all that turret damage and it's as if the turret wasn't even there. And they've gone on Yang. That seems to be the option, but no, he's just way too tanky. He's level 18 
on the map right now, and they cannot deal with him whatsoever. He's bringing three members towards him as he pushes in that super creep wave, and Besiktas, they're, they're just in such a devastating hole right now. They need to make something work. Yeah, well, they just don't know what to do. Macau actually going to get caught out here just a little bit, slowed down by this Hollow Flare. Jockster takes so much burst as Tokers trying to escape. These massive damage dealers are falling down, and Yang is now getting closed off by everyone. Takes a whole lot of damage to kill him, but he is going to escape, and that is three for nothing because Besiktas took the perfect engage. Yeah, they certainly did. Yang was out the side trying to push the wave into the middle of the lane and wasn't able to get there in time. Flew over the back but was completely ignorable by Nadius. Nearly killed him in the end, but it still would have only been a three for one. And great engage coming through there from Energy, willing to pull the trigger. That's exactly when Baron has just oh my God. here as well. And Macau just so gets eradicated. So now four for one as Soldrin gets an absolute snipe with the home guards, and they'll start up Baron. Yeah, he was like a super mega death rocket. That's basically what he was, the global ultimate to come through there. They the Baron might getting taken not have down the low. damage to do this, Atlas. They don't have their AD carry coming in here. Yeah, Joxter is going to come around, gets caught in that animation for the death sentence as Revolta looks for Nadia as he picks it up Yang's before falling way. down. Yang, he's trying to make his way into the fight. They don't have a lot of consistent damage, and this dragon's pretty massive. Tokka's here too, though, and that's heaps of damage. Wow, Thaldron does beast damage as well. He's, he's going to eventually go down as the super creeps, as well as top lane, are destroying the base of Besiktas. But... They rolled the dice and they came really close to that one. Yeah, they certainly did. The members of, it, of INTZ just got there a little bit too quickly. The inhibitor turret going to fall down here on the top side. And Yang just looking very difficult to deal with. But if they manage to kill all of the carries before Yang is even a problem in the fight, that is how they're going to win if you're a Besiktas fan. Yeah, exactly right. That seems to be what the game plan is. They equalize... I guess a little bit of map control right there. Dumbledore looking for some vision around the Baron area. Needs to make sure this one doesn't get snuck and they have started it up. Soldier he's quick, but I don't think he's that quick. Dumbledore is gonna have to go in. He's looking for something. Jockster, very, very low. Tokers looking for something as well. Has all of his mana bar, misses the charm. Energy steals the Baron somehow. I have absolutely no idea that the ultimate to come through over to the side. Dumbledore's looking for Tokers here as he locks him down. Macau is going to get the kill into Dumbledore's double kill coming through for a Volta, actually. Is how did that happen? <laughs> the two smites were available as well, and it was a Deanna without anything able to dive in and snipe it away, Atlas. What is going on saving the game. in Turkey? They will probably lose two inhibitors, but they might choose to fight. Yeah, Macau does manage to spell shield something, what but he the? gets super feared by Thaldrin. Mega damages as Th Theocles is going to be able to take down the kill in the end. Nadius, he's now in the back line. Yang's running away from this fight. Probably should just kill the AD carry as Theocles is chasing, chasing Jocks to Yang. He's going to be the next one to die as he then decides to turn. And man, INTZ, they couldn't even get the inhibitor. That was a 3v4 and Thaldrin is an absolute monster now. Why we were talking about Yang the entire game. 8, 4 and 7. Now the Hecarim has a Trinity Force. He's nearly a 6 item Hecarim. And if there was ever an anti-carry in the game, it is Hecarim on the 5.7 patch. And he is wreaking havoc. He is an absolute monster. And... I just want to talk about Turkey and like why Smite doesn't beat the weird abilities from a lot of these mid laners and top laners that come through to try and steal it. Because, I mean, if you remember, Swiper from the Chiefs also Got a managed... W onto the Yeah, Baron, he twisted yep. Advance to Baron to death when he was against two Smites as well. So th it just there must be something in the water. Something in the water, Atlas. Just maybe having the security as a jungler of this really fed top laner who has a bigger Smite than you means yeah. that you can take your eyes off the prize. And we mention it a lot. If you are not used to smiting things, the damage at the end creeps up on you and you really do have to be on point to burst that one down. Oh, yeah. It wasn't even a 50-50, it was a 90-10, but Energy went for it and he got it. He did. It was beautifully played and that may have got Besiktas back into this one. You can see Thaldren able to push out this bottom wave. Mikau able to meet that one. Four items now on this Sivir. 
And it is in response to now a four item Nadius as well. Just picked up the Blade of the Ruin King. Doldrum might have been caught out here. There's a whole team chasing him. He doesn't want to have to use that ultimate. And this might be Dragon number four picked up right now for INTZ. Or it looks like Besiktas want to fight it again. Yeah, they can collapse onto this one if they want. Yang's going to get engaged on us. Theocles is taking a lot of damage. Culling over the top, but doesn't really find too many people. Besiktas, they turn onto the Dragon now, but Ints have all of their ults back up. Energy right in amongst the fight. Look at the ult from Thaldrum. Macau just gets deleted. The box is down. Theocles trying to tank up here as Tokas comes in through the backside. The Foxfire doing some work. Dumbledore, he's just a, a beast. He's able to tank up so much and energy. Luna rushes on top of Tokas and the Besiktas lineup. How are they team fighting like this? Yeah, they're able to get it done. It's just all of the chaos created by the huge Hecarim repetitively diving into these fights. This time, Energy the beneficiary because everyone left the Diana alone, just yeah. able to burst the entire back line. And I have no idea, but somehow they've equalized the gold. Yeah, it's 2,000, something like that, but they've definitely equalized the kills here as well. That's a big deal, Besiktas. Now 24 to 24. Two dragons to three, nine turrets to four. And I am absolutely speechless, Atlas. The base was broken. It looked like there was nothing Besiktas could do to win this game. But time and time again, they have team fought. And yeah. it just seems like their communication is so on point. Their target prioritization, Doldrin's ability to just kill anyone at will. This time, it's Nadius isn't doing anything in this game. He's just fodder. Yeah. for a dragon, but it doesn't matter because Diana and Hecarim are killing everything. Yeah, and Thaldron, I mean, he was notably the star player of this lineup moving forward. Nadius has been playing beautifully throughout it, but now when it all counts, their shot caller on this Turkish lineup is just massive. His last game on the Rumble was beautiful to watch, and now on this Hecarim, man... And he's just sitting in base. They are waiting to get a deep ward in. He wants someone to step out of line. And he is like a car revving an engine. Oh, yeah. About to fly in and smash someone. Better kind of like a rhino. Monster truck derby time. Yeah, I think monster <laughs> Featuring truck derby. Hecarim. I'm having like horrible flashbacks from Jumanji at this point. It's awful. But INTZ, they are going to clear out this way very quickly with the barrels and boomerangs. There's one in the brush. If they overcommit here, no, he just charges out of the base towards the bottom lane. <laughs> oh, sorry, his little hooves. Hilarious. As he exits the He's base. Six items. He's been able to pick up the thorn mail there. He is absolutely huge at this point in the game. Hasn't gone the war mogs, but the thing you have to remember about Hecarim, his effective health pool is so massive oh, because yeah. of his of W. W, Spirit of Dread, just gives him so much health back in the middle of these fights. So you're like trying to chip away at him. He's got the Spirit Visage in there, and he just looks like he's healing off you. While you're doing damage yeah, to him. while you're trying to kill him. It adds insult to injury. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a lot of injury. This is a Trinity Force Hecarim who does a heck of a lot so of damage. The face check from Revolta. Wow. He's able to just flash out of it. They didn't use anything to keep him there. They used a Q from Leona and then let him meander back out of the brush. Yeah, he listed lazily from the brush. <laughs> that was very strange. But Revolta lives to see another day. Does blow the flash, though. Yeah, so four items now finished up for the carries. It really is only Tokas that has an advantage over energy at this point in the game. And you feel even then, it's not that huge. It's just a completed needlessly large rod item. Wonder if he goes with the death cap just to get a huge shield coming through there from uh, his W, or whether he goes for something like the uh, Luna Deco to just go for the hundred to zero potential on probably Tokers, Jock, Jockstar. Everyone but Revolta and Yang will die immediately if that is a pickup from Energy. Do you feel like if Energy had have been going for a Luna Deco, he should have picked it up earlier though? Um, yeah, definitely the potential is there to pick it up earlier. Although I think that, see, I'm in two minds as the Baron's actually started Whoa. up this falling very quickly. In two minds, just purely because of the fact is they're going for a flank. Just watch oh, the Hecarim fly in. Thaldrin looking to make this a mess here as the red team, they take down the Baron. 
Besiktas locked that one through. The horse is riding amongst the fight. Just Dumbledore trying to be a menace here as Yang doing the best that he can, but he's being ignored. Jockster falls down. It is going to be Macau picking up Dumbledore. And in fact, in the back line, they lose Nardius. But my goodness, Energy doing some work. Thaldron's still at half health and they've got the Baron. Yeah, but Thaldron didn't use ultimate and Theocles used his ultimate incredibly late. So in the end, that was a team fight one with probably the two most important ultimates not used. You can see Nardius is, his is also on cooldown. So they're able to win team fights currently at this part of the game without pressing their R buttons. Which is very, very scary if you're an INTZ fan. And it was fan. a death cap picked up there as Jockster still playing Ring Around the Rosy. He's made it into the top brush and he's going to be able to get back. Yeah, Thaldron can't even find a pink ward as he wanders through. He's going to win Empowered Recall back as Theocles not going to want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Macau here. And wow, Nardius. He's gone with the BF sword before he has even picked up any form of defensive item. This is going to be a Mercurial Scimitar no. most likely. Bloodthirster. Could be a Bloodthirster. I like it. Cut through the, the thorn mail without it killing you. Because yeah. he's really sick of killing himself by attacking a Shivana. Yeah, potentially. And look, the shield is a defensive stat in its own right coming Precisely. through there. Not to mention Blade of the Wrong King, the active, also a defensive option. No, I don't think that. It's a heal. And oh, a speed energy's boost. been caught. Yeah, he's in a lot the of trouble. The Zonya's Hourglass is available there. Wow. Does have Pale Cascade, uses the ult in order to escape here as Theocles now forms a front line, gets bursted down, but he's so tanky. The culling comes through. Energy looking for a way back in as now Dumbledore a little bit zoned away. There's the onslaught of shadows, but only really gets the front line and INTZ. They don't get the pick, but they also don't die. Yeah, exactly right. Teleport used by Yang to get in there. This is the fourth dragon that can potentially be picked up by NTZ if they can capitalize and get in position of this one. But look how quickly the members of Besiktas are streaming from the oh base. Oh my goodness. His horse runs pretty fast. He certainly does. They'll be able to pick up a blue buff for their mid laner. He went with a death cap, not the Luden's Echo. Oof. Jockster looking for the death sentence, doesn't find it. Theocles is going to get a ward down here. They want to clear out this pink as Theocles knows that he can just be this massive frontline. 5,000 health approximately for this Sejuani. Death sentence not going to be found. As Theocles does have ultimate available. Onslaught of Shadows, importantly, is not yet up. And the culling also not there. They need to be careful how they group here. Someone needs to pop Macau's. Wow. Oh my goodness. Banshee's Veil. As they start up the dragon... But, oh, this is so risky. Yeah, Revolt already taking a half health here. Moonfall is going to get everyone to close in just a little bit as now they're looking for the fight. They try to... Jocks are just getting torn apart. Yang, he's super low as Dumbledore closes the gap on him. Shield of Daybreak going to lock down that kill as now Jockers... Tockers, sorry, trying to get something done. And Macau, that is the most frightening feeling for an AD carry in the world as and the Headless Horseman after you. Nadius dies again. No one is feeling for Nadius. For a man that has had team comp after team comp built around him, Lulu, Oriana, yeah. uh, Jana, Jinx, <laughs> Nunu uh, yep. is coming in there. He has had absolutely no assistance from his team this game. It's not what this team comp is about, Spawn. It's about let's jump on them and destroy them. And it's been working. Yeah, it certainly has. You can't criticize it as they pick up their third dragon. They grab a 2,000 gold advantage with that turret falling in the mid lane. And this game that looked like it was going to be over in the 30-minute mark, once again, late game coming up huge for Besiktas. Yeah, and they've... Look, and now it's when Hecarim, Sejuani, they're both shining lights on this team. And we saw it Theocles before with that Cinder Hulk and with a Warmogs and all of his items. Man, it's just ridiculous amounts of health for yeah. all of these tanks in this game. And I want to see whether he does sell that Ruby Sightstone and go towards the Leandri's Torment. The late game damage that comes out of the Szechuani with that item is completely ridiculous. Yeah. For slowing people, getting the burn across everyone, just amplifies with your kit so well. Have to see whether he does go for something aggressive, but as you said, right now, he's sitting pretty much on 5,000 health and is an absolute monster. Yeah, completely ridiculous. Thaldron going back into split push mode. Doesn't quite have the health bar, but the amount of effective health for this Hecarim is pretty silly. What with 
the Thorn Mail and the Frozen Heart. Energy, able to clear out these creep waves so and fast. look at Energy Shield. Energy is effective health pool. Talking of effective health, is absolutely huge. Would be sitting on no cooldown whatsoever that shield right now. And just able to get so much life back. What is it? Not entirely sure yet, Spawn. Pale Cascade. It is still on a 10 second cooldown, approximately. Yeah, about a 10 second cooldown, but is a 340 sh health shield on both turns. So, my goodness. About 700 health he's getting with a double proc coming through there. It's not too bad at all. Able to soak up a whole heck of a lot of damage in these fights. And also does a whole heck of a load of damage with that one because he's got about 800 AP. Yeah, exactly right. 723 is the oh, AP. Oh, he did it! He did exactly what you said there. Theocles now picks up the Leandri's Torment and sells the Ruby Sidestone. Your, you, sir, are a prophet. Yeah, so able to pick that one up and a bush camp now coming through from the INTZ lineup looking for someone. Baron up in 40 seconds. They see Hecarim in the bottom lane. Oh, that's Scrying Orb. That was stunning, INTZ. Have to sheepishly walk away. Yeah, so Hecarim now has the home guard teleport available. They send someone to respond to him. 29 seconds until Baron. You think that would have to be the objective focus. They don't have enough range to take out the turrets without it. The longest range champion is Lucian, and everyone else is melee on Besiktas' lineup. I feel that is very much going to be a telling sign as they try and siege into this comp that has an Ari and a Siva for wave clear. Yeah, I have a feeling that Besiktas really need to kill everyone <laughs> yeah. if they're going to get anything done. But Baron is going to be up again right now. Spot the ward. It's in the brush. The banana one. They're pinging oh, it cool. out. Boomerang going to land on a Dumbledore, but he's pretty tanky now on this Leona. Does have the Righteous Glory available as well, so can speed up his team. Thaldrin sitting in base with the Home Guards. Revolta. We're going to get something started, but... Home Guards coming in. Yeah, there it is. Jocks are going down very, very low. It's going to be, in fact, the Zonyas used by Energy, who's also very low. Revolta on the back line whiffs the ultimate, but there's the ult in the back as Thaldron makes his presence known. Yang again destroys Nadius in this fight, and Energy, he might fall down. Pale Cascade, though, we were talking about that shield. That nets him a kill as Jockster. He might fall to Theocles, who's now just burning down Look how much the damage members of INTZ. That's disgusting, Spawn. Is what it is. It's devastating charge. Back available. Skirmish to Saber from Thaldrin and just ignores the Ari. He's going to head back because <laughs> he wants home dies guard again. Yep. Will someone peel for the AD carry? Because otherwise you can't kill structures. Hey, uh, Diana wants to talk to you about that. Yeah, but she's so low health and there is a Shivana still hanging around here. Nah, they're not too worried about it. You're going to be able to take down the inhibitor here, but Shikdash. Can Probably not going to be able game. to win the game. They've got Thaldron on the way, and Theocles might just choose to fight. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is why you peel for your AD carry late game. Well, Thaldron is now here, but Yang, successful defense of the Nexus turrets, and Besiktas probably could have just gone and taken the Baron. They but still can. Yeah, well, Energy's going to go back to base. Does have the home guard boots. He's going to be able to get to the Baron relatively quickly. And Besiktas, they're not actually going to take it. Yeah, so they're not looking to take it. They're just looking to set up for it again. Their AD carry, he's only three seconds away. Still 20 seconds on the mid laner because Soldrin stalked him till the end of the earth before yep. burying him. And it did happen, ladies and gentlemen. The horseman will find you. Oh, man, that was about as frightening as what actually happens. Yang, able to clear out these wards. Ships in the night. These top laners pass one another. He's going for the AD carry again, Thaldron. My goodness, there's the dragon over the wall, actually, as Yang loses a huge cooldown there just by being out of position. And energy. It's a huge... Oh, my goodness. The predictive... Death Sentence is going to come down into Energy. Lands the Boomerang. There's the Moonfall on three members. Sacrifices his life to his Energy, but he may have started the fight for here for his team that he wanted. Revolta trying to get out. Macau is going to get closed in on Nadius. Kills Macau now as well. The AD carry is still alive in this Besiktas lineup. Tokas tries to get a charm, but he's not going to find one. And now the base, it's broken most definitely, but they may start losing their Nexus turrets. Yeah, so they're looking to see whether they can win the game, even though he's tanky. 
Doldrin suicides. Yeah, Dumbledore's going to fall down as well. This Theocles. could be the game in reverse. That is horrible news coming through from Besiktas. And what are these two teams doing in the late game? I'm not entirely sure. Suiciding to turrets seems to be a thing. But I don't know. At the moment, gold, entirely relevant. But this massive top lane of creeps, that's four siege minions. Yeah, that's going to take out the inhibitor pretty quick spot. Someone needs to get up there to deal with it. And their backs were stopped there in the mid lane as Theocles is going to head back to base. The Baron ignored now almost entirely as they just want to kill each other all the time. Nadius able to defend the inhibitor. Of course, no inhibitor turret still available for top and mid. Yeah, that, this game is completely and he did it. off the chart. Nadius, the man who's 4 and 10. The boy who lived. The boy who didn't live is going to continue not living because he now has a Bloodthirster instead of a Mercurials. And oh my god, they still haven't cleaned out all the creeps there. Teleport coming through. They're going to start up the Baron. There's still 11 seconds on two members. And that was a Shivana teleporting away from a creep wave as well, which was very strange. Well, he doesn't need it. He's been six items for about 15 minutes. Yeah, but it, his, his base probably doesn't want a whole bunch of creeps. Here comes Hecarim again. Streaming oh, out of the base. Oh my goodness. Didn't have teleport, so no teleport home guard engages. Nice explosive cast. Gonna net them the Baron as now Yang tanks up the whole culling. There he is, flying into the back line. Revolta gets in as well. It's a nice zoning ultimate to come through from Theocles. That is the best solar flare that I've seen in this game. Nadius takes down Macau. And Dumbledore, take a bow, my friend. That secured you with that kill on the AD carry. Revolta, he now has to run as Thaldren. He gets healed up. They're looking for Revolta. The fat man can't run that fast, but he can body slam away. But look at these Nexus turrets. They're falling solo. Energy and Tokers. Both destroying one another, but it doesn't matter. The Nexus is going to die, and Besiktas, they make it 2-1. and one. Yeah, 2-1 and one in two hugely long games. This is devastating for Int. Once again, getting yeah. ahead early. Yang was a monster. It looked like that game was going to be over at about 30 minutes, but the Turkish team stuck to it. You see them hugging the crowd going nuts. Because this series has been absolutely berserk. This has been a complete marathon spawn. And this Turkish lineup, if they have anything, they have tenacity. They are able to play out these games to the bitter end. And if they notice that, hey, we're winning a fight because we're not doing stuff, we're going to continue not doing stuff. Yeah, exactly right. And Thaldren in those team fights for about the helicopter. 10 minutes was the solo carry. He was diving onto two members and just saying, I will kill you quicker than you can kill my team. Screw the Protect Nadius team comp yeah. that we've been running for a series and a half. This is about Hecarim, and wow, there is a reason that top laner is banned. Well, that's exactly right, and Thaldren as well. It's a reason why this guy is called the star player of the Besiktas lineup, and we've seen it demonstrated the last two games. He's looked so good. Yeah, he certainly has been able to take everything that he is given. And we have a replay of the last team fight to just demonstrate exactly what this Hecarim was doing. So you see, they don't have their members there. Baron started up by INTZ. This is the call that they've been waiting for. And as we roll it out, we see that it starts on their turn. They poke everyone out, get the Baron secured. All the damage has gone down onto Theocles, but right here is where it turns because once again, they overcommit. Revolta and Yang Leave Tokers, Mikau, and Jockster <laughs> to the Wolves. Well, not to the Wolves, <laughs> to, to the, the one Hecarim. Hecarim. Because Hecarim flies in. If we roll this one out, he goes down incredibly low, but everyone just has to peel back. And you see the dive that comes through from the rest of the team. They just do so much ridiculous damage to the back line. And at a certain point of the game, I was making fun of it, but you have to peel for your carries because they're the ones that do all the damage. Yeah, that's exactly right. And Thaldren then, I mean, he soaked an exhaust and took up all of the time of all of the damage for INTZ. Yeah, exactly right. At that point, Shivana is not the big damage threat that she was during the mid game. Gragas is just a tanky member that had already used his yeah. disengage tool. They overcommit onto the back line and Thaldren just zones the other three members single-handedly. Followed up with a beautiful solar flare by Dumbledore. Really secured the last team fight. But things was going bad. Wait, like 15 minutes before that fight. INTZ were just slowly losing out on the game. Yeah, well, this is the thing. And this is what's been happening in the last two games as well. It's got to a point where Besiktas, 
They just get one team fight that they manage to win in the late mid-game after getting decimated and then consistently win every team fight after that. And once again, their target prioritization yeah. in their shot calling is always on point. They know exactly who the they need to take off the map first. And we have another replay to bring up to show you guys. And this is where very early in the game, nine minutes in, if we roll this one out, it is a huge commitment coming through here. They try and take out Macau, and the teleport is burnt. Macau doesn't fall, actually. He lives for such a long time, goes into the top of the map, and Nadius, unfortunately, is just overcommitting towards the kill. In the end, has to run back, and they're trying to peel Yang off, but Macau, he lives in there. Finally falls down to Dumbledore, who dodges out of a charm, and the rest of the team comes around for the fight. And this is exactly where Yang got massive because on the backside, he was able to live. He picked up a 2-0-2 scoreline off the back of that. And even though it went equal, it actually stayed very good for the Besiktas lineup. As we continue to roll this one out, Yang gets his recall in. They go to blue buff and the fight picks up for the second time. So it looks right now, Besiktas' favor. They're going to be able to invade this jungle, get the blue buff away. Soldier doesn't come around straight away, but you see the support player collapses, the jungle collapses, and Yang, who went back and spent all that gold, sorry, he's 1-0-1, one, on one. spoiler alert, he picks up another couple of uh, kill and assists here. <laughs> As the fight continues, he rejoins before the other uh, team is able to respond to it, and he picks up another kill, grabs another assist over the back line, and INTZ at this point in the game, we're looking very, very fearsome. Didn't look like they were going to give up another early game, but... Boy, oh boy, did Besiktas really fight back. Yeah, and this is the thing. That was the 10-minute mark. This is the time when INTZ win games. But it seems to me like after it's 25 minutes in, Besiktas just slowly wear you down, and they eventually win out. And INTZ need to go back to their super aggressive, super committed early game. They were committed and then to win. that one. They took two Yeah, but it didn't, they didn't down. do the winning is what I mean. I don't know how much more mid-game you can get than the team well, comps that true. INTZ were able to put together. They had an Ari, they had the Siva coming through there. They were an absolute mid-game focused team comp. They just made one mistake in the bottom lane underneath the turret. The huge engage came through and from there, they just couldn't get control back ever. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see whether they can come back in the next one. It is two to one now, Besiktas in the lead. We are going to have a short break, but when we come back, it'll be game four in this grand final.